This is the Emergency Cardiology Update, the articles you need to know. I'm Rob Orman. He's Aaron Bright. That is me. And the talent today, the, the, car talent. the cardiology aficionado, the emergency cardiology aficionado, yeah. Dr. Amomatu, professor and vice chair, University of Maryland, Baltimore, Maryland. Amo, let's get to it. All right. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Very Aaron. Good. Thank yeah. you guys for having me here. Welcome. So we're going to spend some time talking about articles from 2017 that everybody I think in acute care medicine has to know about. I'll start out with my disclosure slide. I'm barely paid by University of Maryland. <laughs> uh, no, no drug companies. And it's a little outline of what we're going to go through. We're going to do a few ECG topics because they happen to be things that I love. And we'll talk just a little bit about ACS and CHF, then one quickie on dissection, and then two quick articles on cardiac arrest. And I'm going to preface this by saying that these are not necessarily the best articles of the past year, but they're my favorite. Don't sell yourself short. They're my favorite now, too, because right, they're your right. favorite. So, yeah. I mean, if, if there's any EBM people out there that are going to dissect the articles, just yeah. get lost. <laughs> Find something else right? to do. Yeah, but, but these articles all have some really important take-home points that right. I think will help you save lives. So let's go ahead and get started. So we'll start out with this one that has to do with computer ECG interpretation. And let me start out with a question for you guys, yeah. Aaron and Rob. Yeah, How yeah. good is the computer in your shop at interpreting the ECG? Mm, I'd say for things like STEMI, it's about, I would say it's maybe 70% specific, 60% sensitive. 70% sensitive, 60% specific. Or, or, yeah. or mix and match. I'd say it, it misses, it catches, but there's a lot of false positives, a lot all of right, false negatives. All right, those are pretty specific statistics. They all say, also say that about 72% of all statistics are completely made up. That is all true. Right? So Aaron, 50% of the time it works every exactly. time. Exactly, all right. The, so, uh, I say, I, all I know is that, I know it's cool to say that the computer doesn't know what it's talking about, but sometimes that thing picks some stuff up but I still don't rely on it. So hopefully you're going to tell me that's the way to go. I don't know. I, I'm going to tell you exactly that's the way to okay. go. I think I'm going to tell you also that you guys and everyone out there who has a little bit more than basic skills at computer interpretation, at ECG interpretation, yeah. is better than your computer. So this was a fantastic article published in Journal of American College of Cardiology that talked about this particular topic. It's a really important article. And Rob, you and I have talked about this before. I think this is my favorite article of the past year, and it's really a hallmark article that everybody has to know. So it, it might be a little bit surprising, but actually there's no international standard that's ever been established about how computers are supposed to interpret hmm. the ECG. There's multiple different manufacturers, maybe six, seven, eight or so, and there's no standard no agreement about how they interpret the ECGs. Remember that the algorithms are all programmed by humans, which are which of course we all are programmed, we all are prone to making mistakes as well. Yeah. And there's never been a direct comparison of all of the different manufacturers who would want to be involved in a study like that because somebody's going to come out second yeah, or third. Hey, so just someone's collude. the worst. Somebody's algorithm exactly. is no good. Yeah. yeah. So so there's never going to be a study. At least I don't think there's ever going to be a study where that's actually done. Hmm. So where do computers have trouble? Well, number one, they have a real, real tough time with distinguishing amongst the various arrhythmias, conduction disorders, pacemaker rhythms. They're really bad at that. And in general, computer accuracy in arrhythmias is only about 50% sensitive, 50% accurate. So here's a, a really nice case. This was sent to me by one of our residents very recently. This patient was transferred to our hospital from an outside hospital for new onset atrial fibrillation. And actually, if you look right up there in yeah, I see the- Yeah, um, waves. Yeah, there's definitely P waves. There's, it's a sinus rhythm with occasional PACs. Ooh. And the patient got started on heparin oh and boy. packed up and transferred to university. And imagine the expense that's associated with that. And it's all because this is what the ECG interpretation said at the top, atrial Ooh. fibrillation. Uh -huh. And the treating physician focused on that interpretation. I've seen this many, many times before. In fact, one case I remember where a patient actually got diagnosed with AFib and it turned out to be just Mobitz, Mobitz 1 person got put on heparin, went upstairs, and the night of admission had a massive lower GI bleed, Ugh. got transfused, had a very stormy outcome, and this is a very, very common misdiagnosis. The computer is notorious for overdiagnosing AFib. 
The computer also double counts T waves. Take a look at this hyperkalemia 12 lead ECG. Oh, yeah. The computer was looking at these, thinking they're QRS complexes, and it doubled the rate. So it called it sinus tachycardia, and it also called this an anterior wall STEMI. This Ooh. is nothing more than classic, classic hyperkalemia. Again, this is the type of thing it happens all the time. Up to 75% of pacemaker ECGs are interpreted. STEMI, this is what we've really got to know well. Take a look at these numbers. False positives up to 40%, false negatives up to 40%. Ugh. So it's going to overcall and undercall a lot of our STEMI ECGs. So the HA actually came out with a statement saying that you should never use the computer to decide whether to activate the cath lab or not. So pre-hospital activation of the cath lab should never be done based on the computer interpretation. Wow. It also frequently underestimates the QT interval and the more artifact there is, the worse it tends to get. Now, some people might say, well, if I use the computer, it decreases the reading time, but that doesn't make sense if, if it's decreasing the reading time by feeding you incorrect diagnoses. Yeah, no and thanks. Unless you have really basic skills, the computer is probably not gonna help you. It's probably gonna bring your skills down uh, unless you are a beginner at interpreting ECG. So final points from the article. These are a couple quotes from the article that I think were really, really interesting. Computer-based analysis of the ECG may lead to erroneous diagnosis with useless, inappropriate, or even dangerous care of the patient. And take a look at this statement. Wow. It has been roughly estimated that these misdiagnoses may account for up to 10,000 adverse effects or avoidable deaths worldwide wow. just because people tend to over-rely on the computer interpretation. So while it's true, it may reduce your interpretation time time in many, many cases is just going to end up misleading you.